Hello, good evening everyone. Charlotte here from Enriching Environments on Tuesday the 13th of September from live from here in Dubai for this Instagram live masterclass. And thank you so much everyone who's joining. Um, hi Deepika, thank you so much. Hello Russia, hello Handcraft. Hello everyone who's joining and this evening we are going to be talking, hi Sarah, we are going to be talking about a really, really beautiful topic, a really beautiful subject and um, a subject that's really dear to my heart in terms of the magic we can feel and the magic our child feels, the magic that is created when we don't correct our child, when we allow them to do things for themselves without, hi David, without um, correction. And before we dive into the live, I just want to draw your attention to my first book, The Montessori Mission, which is a love letter to Montessori and the beautiful diverse communities in which Montessori thrives around the world, how each of these people in their communities, there's 10 participants, they answer the same 10 questions about Montessori. And um, then with um, poems and artwork and photos of their Montessori journey, everything that is relevant and beautiful from their culture, they um, put into this book. And then I wrote a reflective practice for each chapter drawing on the teachings, drawing on the wisdom from each of these guests, allowing us to go deeper into our self-knowledge, our understanding of ourselves, our understanding of our children. So this book, The Montessori Mission, is available on Kindle and paperback from Amazon, wherever you are joining in the world. I dip into it almost every day um, to get quotes, to get wisdom from these incredible people who contributed. Um, and I highly recommend it. The American Montessori Society is doing a piece on it. It's going to be featured at the Montessori Europe Conference um, in their, uh, sorry, Congress in their program next month. Um, I would love for you to dive in as well and let me know how you feel. So, back to this evening. Feeling the magic is created when we don't um, correct our children. We allow them to develop in their own space and own time and we allow them to, um, we don't allow them to do anything. When we witness the unfolding of their soul, that's really the message that I want to transmit this evening is that this is about witnessing our child and being there in with our child in that space as they unfold. Um, that's the most powerful thing um, for me to give to you this evening and so as we begin let's just take a moment and people who are listening afterwards um, on all the different podcast platforms let's just take a moment to set our intention for this masterclass this evening what would you like to take away how do you want to feel at the end of this masterclass um, let's have a deep inhale just set our intention to a few shoulder rolls if you like. Feel, how do you want to feel? What do you want to receive from this masterclass this evening? How are you feeling in your body? What tight spots are there? How was your day? If you're in the evening like we are in Dubai, how was your day? If you're in the US and your day's just beginning, what plans and intentions do you have for your day? Hello everyone who's joining. So, before we begin, sorry, before we begin, as we begin, I really want to share a really, really special story about the magic that is created when we do not correct our child. And it's a story about my daughter, Olivia, who's um, over seven and a half. She'll be eight in a few months in December. And the story is about something that happened last week. And 
Olivia has been learning to write in the past year and learning to read in the past year. Um, in Montessori, we follow the child, so it's when, it, according to the child's interests, um, so every child learns at a different time. There's not a prescriptive approach where everyone has to learn the same thing at the same time, like their name or anything else. It's very much child-led, like all things in the Montessori world, in the Montessori classroom. So, um, Olivia writes on her whiteboard that we, we have a family whiteboard and we write what we're going to do every day. That's the three of us, Olivia, Harry and me. Um, and Olivia writes on there every day. She's going to get up, she's going to um, do yoga, she's going to write in her journal, she's going to have a shower and she, all, and she would always put on there, climb trees. And she would spell trees, T-R-R-E-S. So one extra R. And I didn't ever correct her. I, I know that um, we allow the unfolding of the child and so what my role is is to just hold that space for her when she's writing and trust 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 know that one day she is going to realize the right spelling for tree and every word and this beautiful moment happened last week so she's writing every day climb trees t double r double e s and she wrote it one day, Climb Trees. She wrote this last week. And then she ran off and went to a book. Um, looked at the book and I saw her like flicking through the pages sort of intensely. And then went back to her whiteboard. So the whiteboard's just there on my left. And then <clears throat> looked at the word trees and sort of rubbed it out a bit. And started again and wrote trees again, but this time with only one R, not two Rs. And then she went back to the book and flicked through frantically again. And then she came to me and said, Mama, I've just realized trees has got one R and two E's. And for all this time, I thought it had two R's and two E's. I've just realized. And that was it. That was her moment of realization. And it was so, so powerful. It was so beautiful, just in that moment, she realized for, himself, for herself, um, by her own means, in her own time, through a combination of writing and reading, and just that familiarity of reading and um, seeing it written down, she had made that connection. Those neural pathways had fused that the way she was writing trees was incorrect, and that was how it was written in a book. And that was such a powerful moment. She absolutely, and the, the intrinsic motivation a child gets from a moment like that. And I could see and I could feel her energy. And she kept on then stepping back and looking at the whiteboard and then looking at it again. And then stepping back and looking at it again and going back and going back to the book and kind of going back and forth and back and forth. And I could feel everything working, all the cogs working. I could see and feel in her energy what a, uh, what a tiny but a huge step this was for her and the power that she got from that realizing she could work it out for herself and there's nothing um i mean it's it just it's a myriad of different ways that this supports self-confidence and this supports resilience and this supports problem solving mainly the fact that the child has worked out for themselves and that I didn't correct uh, her before. I'm not sure if she's drawn the dots yet that I didn't correct her before, but certainly the fact that she managed to work it out for herself is does so much more for her self-confidence and her self-belief um, and bigger picture what she thinks she's capable of than any other words that I could give, any other affirmations that I could give, all the things that I do, all of the positive language I could use. Nothing comes close, no praise, no reward, no, nothing can come close to the feeling that a child has when they achieve something for themselves in their own time, in their own way. And this is, let me give you some examples of how that can play out for children of different age groups. And actually, before we go there, 
what I would love you to do is thinking of that story of my daughter Olivia and um, feeling into that feeling. Um, when did you feel that feeling last with your child? When have you felt that feeling? Whether it's a two-year-old trying to put their shoes on and they put them on the opposite feet um, and you don't correct them and they manage to do it for themselves. And obviously the joy for them is that the fact they've put their shoes on. They don't care whether they're on the right foot. Uh, foot or not because they can't feel that yet or the three-year-old that's got dressed and their t-shirts on back to front but the joy the the point the the point of it the point of uh, celebration and joy for the child um, I, actually I want to come back and not say celebration the point of joy for the child intrinsic joy comes from the fact that they did it for themselves and so um, so that's for about uh, yeah a three-year-old. The two-year-old is the is the shoes on the opposite feet when they've tried, and they'll continue doing that into three and four years old. But the t-shirt on back to front, that's very common for two, three, four-year-olds, um, or even inside out and all of those other things. Then if we get into older children, so it will become perfectly normal for five, six, seven, eight-year-olds to be um, getting numbers upside down, six and nine, upside down, and back to front, B and D, um, all of these things. And if we can just trust, hello everyone who's joining, if we can be in that space of trusting that they will unfold in their own time, in their own way, that is so much more powerful than any words we say. And, and we'll come to the non-correcting part in a moment, and they have that intrinsic sense of motivation. That shows that we trust them, that shows that we are not so enmeshed with them that we uh, can't see their journey and uh, their progress and their trajectory. What we really are showing in this magic when we don't correct, we are showing that we trust them on a deep level and we are there to witness their unfolding. And that's what we're there for. If we think of um, Halil uh, Gibran's beautiful um, uh, poem, Your Children Are Not Your Children, um, and how he speaks of them coming through us but not belonging to us, just that simple poem. And then if you've read The Conscious Parent by Dr. Shafali, she speaks so much about this, about this non-attachment, non-attachment to outcome um, that we, seek to have and we're not going to get it right we're imperfectly perfect human beings but um this uh um non-attachment to outcomes with our child they're not an extension of us they are separate from us and so they um will find their own way of learning and their own way of navigating life and to have the confidence to do that and to deeply trust in themselves, we have to give them opportunities to problem solve and we have to allow them to do things in their own way and give them that space and time for them to work that out as they go along. And what that looks like is for a two-year-old um, putting the shoes on back to front or um, uh, the t-shirt on back to front or the numbers and the letters upside down. Um, those are the really, really, really powerful moments and that just shows such a deep level of trust that we have in our children. Um, hello everyone who's joining. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the next piece is, yeah. Feel into, so that story I told about Olivia, my daughter, at the beginning, um, about I could see and really feel her energy and feel her joy as she worked out the correct spelling of tree for herself. Um, when I'd love you to close your eyes for a moment and recall when have you felt that moment of magic with your child when have you felt that moment of magic when you have observed them you've watched them work something out for themselves accomplish that something for themselves and it may not be the way that you have done it but that joy can you remember can I can feel it in my heart really strongly can you remember, can you recall, firstly from your memory, but then secondly from your body's memory, what did that feel like? And can you remember that energy that was coming from your child? You know, maybe they exclaimed, I did it, I did it by myself. And obviously that's a verbal, you know, um, 
notification for us that, of how they feel. But most importantly is the body memory they're having in that moment that they did something for themselves. That is how, um, it's a bigger topic of self-confidence of course, but this is one of the really, really powerful ways that we um, can uh, cultivate self-confidence in our children just very very simply allowing them to do things in their own way and not correcting them just because it doesn't look like we the way we would do it um, so it, let's take a little moment I'm gonna have a sip of water and just feel into what the the feeling was like in your body what you, what the feeling looked like in your child's body when you didn't correct them when they achieved something for themselves what was the look like, uh, like on their face did they say something did they not say anything was it just a smile um, uh, how could you see your uh, joy oh goodness David said something sad and I'm gonna actually talk about the reasons that we do correct um, uh, in a moment but David's just said I still remember the critical voice of my mother every time I iron a shirt to this day um, that is really it's really really powerful isn't it those moments where we've been um, hurt by our parents feelings and we're gonna do it to our own children you know of course no parent very very few parents set out to, to harm their children or wound or hurt their children's feelings but it's really um, poignant for us to realize those moments uh, that, that hurt us and that, that wounded us all those years ago and then we have a reality check because we think oh my god what am I doing wrong now with my own children and that is um, uh, a spiral in the story we mustn't get we mustn't get into and that's when in those moments we come back to this feeling in our body what is that feeling of joy what does that look like on our child's face what does it look like on our, what does it feel like for ourselves if we can't access this feeling or this remembrance in a, a, of when our child has done something for themselves if you're beating yourself up um, because you have corrected your child and you think you've been too harsh or what have you. Let's look at this a different way. Can you feel into the times where you achieved something for yourself and you, what you felt in your body? Did you tell anyone? Did you not tell anyone? Did you write it down in a journal? Um, did, you, did you feel it in your body? Did you ha feel that gratitude and joy just for yourself? And then it's gonna be easier to access for your children. Let me have a sip of water. Hello everyone who's joining. Um, so now we're just gonna pop a little bit into um, why we have this tendency to, um, this knee-jerk reaction to uh, correct when our child does something wrong, like if they're an older child spells a word wrong or um, puts their shoes on the wrong foot or puts their t-shirt on back to front or does their numbers and letters up. Um, back to front or upside down there's a couple of reasons for that and um, uh, mainly it's a conditioned response um, you know coming so what we learned from our own childhood and that's probably coming from embarrassment or shame you know what will other people think if my children's feet are on back to front or uh, feet are on back to front if their children's shoes are on back to front what are other people going to think what are other people going to say um, and we can also fit and it's really interesting because um, a client said to me once oh but um, you know I'm just I'm just protecting them because people are gonna say oh you know people are gonna make comments about oh his t-shirts on back to front so I want to save him from that embarrassment and I was like no 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 this is you one this is not his embarrassment or her embarrassment that's your embarrassment so that's something that you're loading onto him or her but the, the second piece is really being an advocate for our child and, a, and a, um, a security guard for our child. So if um, someone does say comments like that, and people say things like that, you know, not intending, you know, Harry's told hundreds of times every week that, you know, oh, people think he's a girl because he's got long hair and his hair is really long and beautiful and all these type of things. But it's, it's up to us to advocate. So if our child is a child that 
is working out the feet to go on the right. Hi Jenny, feet, uh, 